On this episode of China Uncensored, Dunkirk makes a huge retreat in the Chinese market. The CCP wants to treat all foreign companies equally. Badly. And finally, smile. You have KFC. This is China Uncensored. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. You know, the Chinese regime has always said it doesn't want other countries to interfere in its internal affairs. But when it comes to the Chinese regime interfering with foreign companies, the more interfering, the better. The Chinese Communist Party has always required that local Chinese companies above a certain size must have Communist Party branches within their organization. Well, now, the CCP has exerted political pressure on some foreign companies to give CCP representatives in the joint ventures the final say over business operations. This is great news for foreign companies because they're finally being treated equally in China. And you know what's great about having the CCP control your company? Many things, I'm sure, but one that comes to mind is that the CCP will encourage companies to make investments that align with political objectives. Like how the CCP told Chinese companies, you ought to invest in Venezuela. Their socialist economy is doing great. Whoops. Chinese companies have lost between three and five billion dollars in Venezuela as the economy there continues to sputter. And those are just private investments. Outside the tens of billions of dollars the Chinese regime has directly poured into the country. According to a study by the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, investing in Venezuela is even riskier than investing in Iraq and Sudan. Unsurprisingly, many Chinese companies have now left the Venezuelan marketplace. But that's not a retreat, because retreating is not a Chinese value. That's at least what I learned from my favorite state-run media, The Global Times, in its review of the World War II film Dunkirk. Dunkirk depicts a disastrous evacuation, which is very different from traditional Chinese values. Dunkirk is about the evacuation of British troops in World War II who were stranded across the English Channel after retreating from the Nazis. The British originally hoped they could rescue 30,000 of them, but in the end, they rescued more than 330,000. But that's still a retreat. I mean, take the uber-patriotic Chinese film Wolf Warrior II. This hero doesn't retreat. He just kills everybody. Global Times calls it a Chinese-made patriotic movie that literally sent a message that said, the citizens of the People's Republic of China, when you encounter danger overseas, do not give up. Please remember, right behind you, there is a powerful motherland. I wonder what they'd have to say about the Long March. The guerrilla Chinese Communist Army was forced to um, heroically move backwards to avoid being killed by the army of the government ruling China at the time. It was a great victory for the Communists. Sure, 19 out of every 20 soldiers died or deserted, but it absolutely was not a retreat. In fact, it was uber patriotic. Like China's national anthem, which is about marching ahead in the face of enemy fire. The lyrics might not be an accurate description of what really happened in the Long March, but you'd better not mince words when you sing it, because a proposed Chinese law could send you to jail for improper anthem use. So what constitutes improper use? Well, according to my less favorite safe run media, Xinhua, it would be playing it at improper occasions, or maliciously modifying the words. What's even more concerning is that there's talk of implementing the same law in Hong Kong. Which is further proof that when the Chinese Communist Party told the UK that Hong Kong would have 50 years no change, they actually meant 20 years. You know, the 5 and the 2, it's easy to get confused. Speaking of needless regulation, I know you like your Netflix, but in China, the government is clamping down on online dramas. Because you know how to make good TV. Get the government involved. The government will encourage good television production with oversight of the ideological and artistic merit of content. And now, Chinese dramas will never ever surpass Korean dramas. Way to go. But it does make sense in a way. A lot of Chinese dramas are period pieces, especially from the early days of Communist Party rule. Producers could accidentally make some mistakes about history. Not factual mistakes, political mistakes. 
especially because the Chinese Communist Party is in the middle of rewriting history. Researchers have just discovered that as historical documents from the 50s are digitized, dozens of articles have been removed that question the Communist Party's commitment to the rule of law at the time. Wow, they were pretending they had rule of law way back then, too. But while China in the 50s saw terrible mass killing and famine, today you can smile and eat as much fried chicken as you want. Because KFC in Hangzhou has launched a pilot program to let users pay with a smile. To be clear, you still have to pay with money. It's just that you can use your smile to activate the payment instead of your phone or credit card. It uses the same kind of creepy facial recognition software the Chinese regime wants everywhere. Now, if that's not a reason to smile, I don't know what is. Just don't smile too much or you might get double charged. Fortunately, if you're like me, after eating KFC, you won't want to smile for days. And coming up after the break, what do you think these two just agreed to pay for? Hey, if you really want to smile, get on over to ChinaUncensored.tv. There, you'll see loads more China Uncensored you won't see anywhere else, including full half-hour episodes. And you don't even have to pay for it. However, if you'd like to support China Uncensored, also make a trip to the website Patreon.com slash China Uncensored, where you can contribute to the show. That would make me smile.